There aren't many movies about the propaganda machine during World War II, but the dramedy Their Finest offers insight into the British film industry's efforts to lift the nation's spirit during the war. And its stars Gemma Atherton and Bill Nighy have been speaking about sexism and ageism in the industry both then and now. 30 million attend the cinema every week. Your film must show your American sisters that this is a war their husband should be fighting. Their Finest is set in London during World War II. It follows the character Katrine Cole. She's a copywriter brought in to write female dialogue for government propaganda films. So what do you think? No screen credit. And obviously we can't pay you as much as the chaps. Played by Gemma Arterton, Cole is inspired by a real woman. She broke ground in the 1940s in what was decidedly a man's world. And the girls have to finish the job under fire. My character is actually based on uh, a woman called Diana Morgan who worked for Ealing, Ealing Studios at the time and became one of their leading writers. Um, we don't really know how much she wrote for them because she was uncredited a lot of the time, but she really was one, you know, the woman in the writing room that, with all these men and, uh, and became, you know, was a fixture at Ealing Studios. While Cole deals with sexism, lower pay and patronising colleagues, Arterton is optimistic about women making their mark in cinema today. I think we've got further to go, but it's definitely shifting, um, and it's shifting shifting quickly as well. I mean, I'm I'm aware of. I mean, I, the films that I'm involved in now are quite sort of female centric, female driven, and working with a lot of uh, female writers and directors. Um, and uh, so I guess my my head is sort of in that world. Um, so I'm talking from my point of view, but uh, I think there's still a way to go. And then further Excuse along. me. Hello. Hello. Oh, certainly. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Bill Nye plays self-absorbed actor Ambrose Hilliard. He reluctantly settles for a supporting role as he realises his years of playing romantic leads are over. Nye saw his own film career blossom in his 50s, but the star admits he still faced a difficult time as he got older. I remember a phone call when I was 39 and she phoned up and said, you know, it's Hamlet, it's Moscow and Tokyo, and I said, I don't want to play Hamlet. She said, no, not Hamlet, Claudius. Then you realise that you're Hamlet's uncle and that the days when you might have played Hamlet, not that I have any desire to play Hamlet, uh, have gone. So there are all kinds of landmarks. There's a difficult period in your late 30s, early 40s when on a good day you look 33 and on a bad day you don't. And then, you know, and, and you go for interviews and you hope that this is one of those days. For both Nye and Arterton, the opportunity to dive into 1940s London was irresistible. It was a really nice period uh, for, for, for all men and women. We, they really took pride in the way they they dressed, I think, because it was the war and what else could they take pride in but, you know, themselves. So they'd get get up and put the lipstick on and, and put on a tie and, and slick their hair down. I mean, I do think that men and women's clothes, uh, it's just been downhill since then, since the late 1940s. That's when people really knew how to dress. Um, and that's when trousers were trousers, if you know what I'm saying. And girls look, all the girls in the movie look just so chic in those uh, tailored things and beautiful uh, blouses and stuff. And it's just a very, very hip period for, for clothes. The movie started appearing in theatres at the beginning of the month, but their finest will bring all its fashion, drama and romance to home audiences when it's released in the UK on Friday. I'm awfully good. So are you.